So today this plenary 50 ways to leave the earth is about all the new and emerging technologies uh, and businesses and different business models uh, as well as the exploration uh, that are happening. Um, when I first became an astronaut there were two vehicles that could carry humans into space. Uh, the Russians had one and the U.S. had one. And now there are uh, so many opportunities available for humans to go into space, so many spacecraft being developed and so many different ways to do that. So it's an opportunity to highlight that. What's happening is uh, that the challenges that governments uh, face uh, who are working on exploration of the solar system is to send people beyond low Earth orbit for the first time in more than 50 years. So uh, some tremendous challenges uh, associated with that. Uh, radiation hazards, um, logistics train. How do you keep people alive? How do you carry enough supplies and equipment and everything they need? I mean, it's like the biggest camping trip ever, right? You gotta take everything with you. Oh, and by the way, you know, you can't, you can't pack out and go get something if you need it. So uh, those, those kinds of issues are being faced by um, uh, national space agencies that are, are planning exploration. Industry uh, has a different set of problems, and they're the technical barriers that uh, the government has already solved to some extent, but they've solved them in one or two ways. It's a very specific vehicles. So imagine that there were only two types of car in the whole world, right, for transportation, so or two types of airplanes. Now you start to see industry uh, working on all of these different opportunities, uh, but each one of those has to come with the learning that's associated with that. And then, of course, um, the challenges of people who haven't been handpicked for their medical uh, uh, safety, you know, so very healthy and uh, fit uh, and highly trained. And so now you're talking passengers uh, basically going to space, uh, space tourists. And uh, you can imagine uh, that's going to be a little interesting for those companies. It, it just seemed astonishing to me how few people could go to space. I felt very privileged to be one of them. But part of the reason that I was going to space was to build up the body of operational knowledge that would allow this to happen someday. So it's just exciting to see it happen in my lifetime. Well, uh, as we like to say, it is rocket science. <laughs> it turns out it's actually uh, very challenging to develop a safe system uh, that's repeatable. Uh, there's a huge amount of energy involved um, uh, in, in any rocket, uh, especially launching to orbit. Uh, so I think uh, the progress has been uh, steady and tremendous. Um, I think we, uh, 10 years ago, people would have said, oh, 10 years, we'll be sending you know, everyone to space. It's a little harder than that. Uh, but I absolutely believe uh, that you know, within 20 years, certainly, um, uh, the, the big thing is whether the price will come down enough so that an ordinary person can buy a ticket just the same way you could buy a ticket to um, Sydney or Perth or the United States.